The American Meteorological Society's policy program is supported, in part, by a public-private partnership. The basics of climate change are well established. Climate's changing, Humans are causing climate change, and human-caused climate change poses considerable risk to human society. Those are what I would call the basics. So th think of it this way. If you feel heat, smell smoke, hear a fire alarm, and see flames, you can be that much more certain that there's a fire because you have four independent lines of evidence. Mm -hmm. Well, we have this that climate's changing as well. We have rising temperatures in the atmosphere. We have increasing temperatures in the ocean. We have uh, melting snow and ice throughout the world, uh, as Jim was mentioning. And we see biological si systems responding as well with species shifting to higher altitudes and elevations, changing the timing of key life events, uh, and, and a host of other independent lines of evidence that all together show us unequivocally that climate's changing. Scientists have worked extremely hard to first identify the possible suspects. What are the things that could cause a change in climate? And it's a fairly short list. It could be the sun, it could be our greenhouse gas emissions, it could be changes in volcanic activity, it could be internal variability within the climate system. Critically, each of those suspects has a unique fingerprint. And when we look at the patterns of climate change that we're seeing, when we look at that fingerprint, it matches what we would expect from human greenhouse gas emissions almost perfectly and it doesn't match the other suspects well at all, either alone or in combination. And so that's how we know it's human greenhouse gas emissions that are causing climate change. I, I heard one of the panelists earlier talking about, uh, and, and this may be one of the fingerprints, that the lower part of the atmosphere is warming more quickly than the upper. That's part. right, that's right. This is, this is an important way that we can distinguish between greenhouse gases and the sun. Because if it was the sun that was warming things, we would expect warming throughout the atmosphere. But greenhouse gases, we expect to warm the troposphere, which is the lower portion of the atmosphere, but not the stratosphere. And indeed, we see the troposphere, the lower portion of the atmosphere, warming, and we see the stratosphere cooling. And we see layers higher than the stratosphere also cooling. We're talking now about changes in climate that are unprecedented in human civilization. And they're actually unprecedented in two ways. Number one, we're going to a climate that we've never experienced. And number two, we're going there very rapidly relative to changes in climate that we've seen. So that gives uh, physical systems and biological resources and our social institutions less time to adjust to the changes in the climate and that means there's more chance of disruption of the things that we need and depend on. So, and Dr. Higgins, we're, you know, we're hearing from, from Rodney and others about devastating weather events um, and, uh, and they're happening all over uh, the world. How is that connected to climate change? Sure. Well, think of our greenhouse gas emissions a, a little like steroids for the climate system. We emit these greenhouse gases, they trap heat in the atmosphere, that warms the atmosphere, and it increases the moisture that the atmosphere holds. As a result of that increasing temperature and increasing moisture, we increase the severity of events that happen in the climate systems, so small, uh, storms can get stronger, and strong storms can get truly exceptional. Well, uh, so the question of how clear the science is depends a little bit on which particular aspect of the science we're talking about. What I, what I would say is the basics of climate change are well established. Climate's changing, 
humans are causing climate change, and human-caused climate change poses considerable risk to human society. Those are what I would call the basics. Now, within science, there's always a, a research frontier, the, the questions that are being actively looked at. But those basics are solid. I am not familiar with a single scientific organization, that is, an organization with expertise in climate science that disagrees with the basics of climate change. Uh, something like 97 to 98% of climate scientists agree that climate's changing and, and, and humans are causing climate change. We need to both mitigate, that is, reduce our emissions of greenhouse gases so that we uh, prevent the problem from getting out of control, but also build our adaptive capacity. That is our ability to cope with the changes in climate that are happening and will continue to happen. Uh, on the mitigation side, there are a whole range of things we need to do, build renewable energy, uh, encourage conservation and energy efficiency. But the most critical thing, the overarching piece of it is to put a price on our greenhouse gas emissions. It's a basic economic conclusion that if you want less of something, you almost certainly have to increase the price of those activities that cause it. So if we're going to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, we almost certainly have to put a price on emitting. And, and we know that by putting a price on greenhouse gas emissions, we would expect net economic benefits. Because right now, we're, uh, emitters of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases get to treat the atmosphere as a free dumping ground. That's economically harmful because they're shifting the costs, a big part of the costs, of emitting greenhouse gases on everybody else. So what gives me a lot of hope is that we have policy options out there that can help protect the climate system and improve the economy. <laughs>